All right, everybody, welcome to our weekly co-stream. We've got Brian White here joining us uh, from Futuraza. We've got Hans Nelson from Hansi Nelson. We all have our YouTube channels. We're all co-streaming it on all of them. Today, we're going to talk about all the different things that are happening in Tesla. There's just some big moves that Tesla's making, some big things happening to Tesla. Just this morning, Tesla's board of directors released a an announcement that they're going to want to do an annual shareholder meeting, a vote to... Uh, to move the headquarters to Tesla, up to Texas, and to re-ratify the previous 2018 uh, plan, and to vote back in uh, Elon, uh, uh, Kimball Musk, um, and uh, the other board member. So that the two same board members back in again. So that happened this morning. Last few days, we had the 10%, at least at least 10% of staff was uh, laid off, restructuring the company. But then you've got Elon saying that, we need to do massive organizational change in order to get to the next growth wave. And he did clarify in a post yesterday that he's going to go all in on RoboTaxi, but he made sure that to, to tell you that it's not a bet of the company. So this is not like if the RoboTaxi fails, the company's dead, but he really is going to go full on on RoboTaxi because he thinks that if you just continue to create cars the way they are, it's just continue to improve the horse carriage. This is a paradigm shift. So let's talk about all the different things that are happening to Tesla that Tesla's making changes to. Uh, let's start with you, um, uh, Brian. So tell me what you're thinking about the, all these changes. Wow, what a day, all right? You always uh, <clears throat> seem to get us on on the day when things are going absolutely insane. So what we're seeing is uh, the ratification. That's a big one because a lot of people are looking at it and saying, and I'm seeing these people on social media. Why should we pay him? The work's already done. Uh, because the work is already done. Well, but the stock is down over the last few months or year or two, right? That's But it's up from the $15 it was at, split adjusted, when the comp plan was written. So maybe we should pay him to have done that work. At the time, it was approved because it was an insane astronomical amount. I bought my shares after that, knowing full well about it, saying, look, if... If he hits these milestones, I can pay off my house for almost the nothing that I put in. That's a good deal for everyone, and he will have earned every penny. But no, the judge says he deserves zero pennies, and a lot of cynical, uh, very weird people seem to agree. I don't think the institutionals will agree. Will see it that way. I think they will be reasonable and sensible. And what I'm seeing here is, uh, look, we got to we gotta move forward. We've got to incentivize uh, the future. But before we can do that, we have to pay for the work that's already been done. And this is a good move because uh, this is, this puts the power in the hands of the people who are shareholders today. If Tesla doesn't think this will be approved, it won't, you know, they wouldn't have put it forward. Uh, this would answer once and for all with no doubts uh, that yes, this is what shareholders actually want. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't really have anything to add on the uh, on the proxy. I think that is well stated. And um, I'm not going to be dramatic and disagree with Brian today. But that said, I think the your volume's this, a little you're 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 going in and out a little bit or the crackling crackling yeah sorry. okay keep going um yeah, there better at this point in time, artificial intelligence is moving at a pace that is absolutely insane, and whatever the plan was for accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy has to be re-underwritten at this point in time, given the existing state of AI research and AI progress. And so I am not at all surprised. In fact, I do agree with Elon that it is obvious that they need to be very focused as a company on moving in a direction that may be somewhat of a departure from the roadmap that has been laid out in the past that did feature robo taxis as maybe a part of the plan, but maybe not the main course of Elon's strategy. Uh, but I think at, at this point, it seems clear that that has to be re-examined from first principles. 
and that we really need to be going all out towards accelerating the future where artificial intelligence operates real mechanisms in the real world, whether those are cars, whether those are Optimus robots, whether those are robots in the factory at Tesla that help to drive down the cost of manufacturing future robots, that all of these things <clears throat> are going to be much smarter very, very soon. And the economic implications of those facts are stunning. And so I'm definitely behind Elon in this. I do expect to see some turbulence moving forward. Uh, I don't think that, you know, going all in on something like this is going to be smooth or easy. Uh, just like ramping up the Model 3 was not necessarily smooth or easy. Um, I definitely don't expect the vast majority of shareholders, whether they be retail or institutional, to understand and agree with Elon's strategy moving forward. Um, so I think that we are going to be in for an increasingly bumpy ride uh, for the near term, potentially. But I think what we land on, on the other side of all that turbulence, is the reason that I have been invested in the name for so long and will continue to be for many more years to come. Okay, so let's uh, let's go through a little bit of what is happening, right? So some of the big things, and this is big, right? Was Is Elon betting on RoboTaxi? That's the biggest one, right? That's why, so when he when he initially said that I'm gonna do restructuring of the company laying off 10%, that's something they normally do every two, three years. That's normal. To, they use the word streamline um, the, the organization. But that's the language they use several days ago. And then all of a sudden, Elon's now saying that we need to do basically big, massive restructuring of the whole company. And this is a move where in order to get to the next phase, this is, uh, I believe, it's no longer talking about making more cars, right? This is talking about moving to AI, to robots, to robo taxi. So Elon posted, uh, changed his profile to this, and you can see at the bottom says the word auto. Uh, and this is the autobiography of uh, Elon. You know, people are making fun of it. It says auto on me, uh, my biography, <laughs> auto autonomy. But um, this person said, no, that word auto appears when you just do editing on iPhones. And you can see here that this is his photo of his child and it says the word auto. But Elon said, I left it there on purpose. So he's trying to indicate that, um, you know, auto, auto, and that could be the car, it could be autonomy, but, and I can't find this right now, I was trying to search for it, but yesterday he did uh, put a tweet out, post out saying that, you know, it's not quite a bet the company, uh, we're not quite betting the company, but we're gonna go all in on Tesla. Uh, it makes, it doesn't make sense to not do that. So this is the idea that Tesla's realized. He's he's basically saying, this is it. FSD is to the point now where we can make this move. Why create a car that's going to compete with other cars? Let's create, let's redefine autonomy and just you know redefine what cars even mean and redefine the company and what it's capable of. So when he does that, he's going to restructure the whole company and uh, he's going to change like where the investments are. And we've already been hearing that he's putting more money on AI and people who are running the AI team and so forth are getting paid more. Uh, what, what do you guys think about this kind of a move for a company, right? To make this big of a leap forward is saying, hey, we're not a car company anymore. We're going to be in a, you know, a robo taxi company. We're going to be a bot company. If it works, it's going to be insane. And if it doesn't, it's going to be a few years of pretty significant discomfort uh, while uh, Plan B is slowly instituted. And I don't know if you would be amenable to a Plan B if Plan A is always right around the corner. If you've got, if RoboTaxi can come out this year, next year, uh, it would become an insane generator of cash. It doesn't have to be a penny a mile. It doesn't have to be 20 cents a mile. There are a lot of people who would use it over Uber or Lyft just because they don't want to pay tips. They don't want to have to deal with the driver. Maybe they want to put more than two or three people in it, which gets uncomfortable when the front half of the car is occupied by a human. Uh, 
Uh, there are a lot of reasons why it would work better, even at very high costs, and Tesla's cost would be very low to operate it. And the same goes with the robot. If the robot comes out reasonably soon and works reasonably well, it becomes a money printing machine. But we've seen from like your live show that just concluded with Dr. Scott Walter, there is rampant competition and they all Almost all of them appear highly competent and highly sophisticated. The only thing they really lack is the ability to mass produce, which someone like Boston Dynamics could tap into Hyundai slash Kia's uh, manufacturing prowess to get a big, big advantage. Um, a lot of these things, and remember, we only see as of today, when the stealth bombers and stealth fighters were released, they said, wow, look what America's accomplished. No, that's what America had accomplished in engineering 20 years earlier. We were just seeing them for the first time. The things that we're working on now that we can't see is where the excitement is. So while Tesla is working on AI, robotics, uh, robo-taxi, autonomy, uh, they're also working on things that we don't see and can't see uh, and we don't know what they are and we don't know which ones will actually work out uh, and yes that was the thing you said we're all in no we're not all in uh that was you were trying to avoid the phrase nuts to the wainscoting i think but uh, <laughs> uh it was uh something a little more graphic but <clears throat> it's uh and by the way balls to the wall i think is a reference to steam locomotives uh, because the controller was a ball someone check me in that on the comments i'd like to hear but the any of these things could work if they don't, if there's, if there is another hard limit on autonomy or on bots or on AI, uh, we could see another, we could see a couple of years of pain. And that's something investors need to absolutely understand and be aware of. Yeah, yeah I think it's useful for people to think about Meta's journey over the last few years that Mark Zuckerberg has the button, as uh, George Hotz likes to say. He has the ability to say, okay, this is what we are doing. And that is what the company does. And so in 2020, that was a pivot towards the metaverse. And it is a move that cost the company a lot of money. Maybe it was a little bit early. Maybe it was somewhat misguided. There was much consternation in the investment community over how much money they were wasting on the metaverse and letters were written. Um, but Mark is also the one who then pivoted into artificial intelligence. And now Facebook is one of the premier open source AI development teams in the world. And much of the open source artificial intelligence movement owes their current state and progress to people like Yan LeCun at Facebook. And um, so, you know, just because a CEO who has the button makes a decision that seems like it's off course, doesn't mean that it can't be redirected and, and fixed to Brian's point um, and to then turn into massive success for the company. I mean, Facebook is in a great place organizationally right now compared to where they were just a couple years ago. That said, I think that there's so many paths available to Tesla right now to massively restructure the way that they earn profit as a company in the near term, regardless of whether or not we make it all the way to robo taxis in the next 12 to 18 months. That like the time for embodied artificial intelligence is sometime in that bubble like the next two years basically the consensus in the industry is that we are arriving at that inflection point and so in order to be able to really take advantage of when that possibility presents itself we need to be in the arena and i think that's why elon is making this move like all of these strategic indicators that i'm looking at from outside the company tell me that He's sensing the timing of this possibility very accurately. And he's always had his pulse on artificial intelligence. A lot of people are going to say he thought that FSD was going to be possible a lot sooner than it was. That is fair. But right now, 
Elon is not the only one making this bet. Everyone in the industry is making this bet. There's a lot of people that think this is the right time. And if there's going to be that many competitors in the space, I definitely want Tesla to have their hat in the ring. And they have a vertical integration and a manufacturing expertise. So that's, you know, Hyundai does have manufacturing expertise, but do they have the engineering chops to come out with something that is completely groundbreaking to design it in a completely vertically integrated way that is tightly coupled with incredible supply chain management to be able to reach the type of scale that Tesla is going to be able to reach both on FSD enabled vehicles, robo taxis, but then on humanoid robots, you know, I think that remains to be seen. And um, so, you know, I I think that Mm -hmm. while I do expect some volatility moving forward, I do think this is the right time to be all in in this area. So what I would say on that real quick, real quick, is that doing something for the first time is very, very hard. And you'll notice with every major technological breakthrough, as soon as one person does it, a lot of people can see the roadmap and get it done, whether it's steam engines, powered flight, uh, text to uh, voice to text, it, it all, you know, there's a, there's a wave and it crashes. Uh, We just don't know what the sand looks like beneath the water. We don't know when the wave will crest. So it's going to be interesting to see. And I think Tesla has an opportunity with their manufacturing ability to do things that some of their competitors cannot. Yeah. So I want to talk about this. uh, The topic of our uh, show today is game changing moves that Tesla, what you just said, both of you, is that uh, Tesla's always ahead of the game, right? So they were first to do EVs when everybody thought that electric vehicles were just never gonna happen. They started doing that and then they kick-started the electric vehicle revolution. They accomplished their goal, their mission, which is every single car company now realizes they have to create it. They were pushed, crying and screaming to now launch an electric vehicle. It is no longer a debate whether or not electric vehicles has taken over. Across the world, I think Hans and I, we've done a report saying that at least 31 countries have hit that 5% EV adoption rate, typical for new disruptive technologies. Once you hit the 5%, it says skyrockets and it's hard to stop at that point. The replacement of the traditional is gone. They were the first, not the first, but one of the first to say, hey, I'm going to go all in on a humanoid robot. They came out with that dancing human. They came out with the next version. Within a year and a half, they had something that looked really, really good. Boston Dynamics, we just reported today, they just launched a brand new Atlas. Yesterday, they they just, they put away, they retired their old Atlas. Everybody said that they were the most, the incredible leader, but they're actually in catch-up mode because their old bot was not designed. It was pneumatic, not electric. It was very bulky, not designed for scale manufacturing. So. You know, Tesla was the first to say, this is the time to go all in on a human bot that can go at scale to actually be able to do useful work. And we're going to manufacture this at scale, thousands and thousands, and maybe even hundreds of thousands, maybe eventually millions. He started talking about two or three years later, people were still saying, it's not time. There's no way this is possible. Never in my lifetime. Don't you know how hard the AI is? Don't you know how hard the training will be? And don't you know how hard the bot is? No, it'll never happen. I mean, literally two years ago, guys, we kept hearing that from so many people. How many people would say, you're just being over optimistic? Here we are with, I'm reporting at least 10, 12, 15 uh, humanoid robot companies all dropping videos every single day showing the incredible improvement. Tesla was way ahead of that. Tesla started doing full self driving, they started doing autonomy, um, uh, autopilot on highways. And everybody kept saying, because, you know, Elon, you know, dug himself in a grave because he kept saying every year, it's going to be done this year, it's going to be done this year. So nobody believes him anymore. And so when he comes out today and he comes out and says this, and he says, you know, we're gonna, we're not quite betting the company. We're now going to balls to the walls for autonomy is a blindingly obvious move. He's not only releasing uh, FSD to the monthly payment, 99 per month, and releasing out far and wide, letting anybody try it now. Many of us were going, boy, is it a little too early? FSC 12.3.3 certainly looks good, but is it too early? He, they are seeing the improvements. He already is using the next few versions. They already can try, ma- measure and track the disengagement and capability. He was confident enough to release that sooner than later. And now 
he made massive changes to the organization. So, you know, he said this uh, before he said this statement, he said this every half decade or so, Tesla has to do a complete organizational overhaul to reach the next level. And of course, executive tenure is unusually high at Tesla tenures are not. So if anybody who's concerned about why these two top level executives left, you know, they, they, their tenures were eight years and 18 years. So, you know, show me another company that can, can, uh, can they say these kind of things? Typically, it's uh, it's uh, you know, normally less than five years. I think for the Fortune 100s, for their executives, a complete organizational overhaul, and him saying that we're going to go balls to the wall for autonomy. I appreciate um, some of our mem uh, you viewers here. They're pointing out that uh, this guy says, uh, as a Brit, absolutely yes, balls to the wall is the governor. It swings up and releases excess steam, and this is. Uh, First attribute in 1960, balls to the walls was aircraft engine control levers. Having the centrifugal balls on governor of a steam engine hitting anything would be bad. It's 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 funny how you know it's just a normal language stuff, but he you know I think Elon is just so his intelligence and what he knows, and he just says this out of his you know going balls to the wall for autonomy is a blindingly obvious move. So he's referring to steam engine. He's referring to variations on a horse carriage. This is a massive, massive change for Tesla. We're now no longer a car company. <laughs> Once and for all, uh, the car, the company itself is going to invest money. It's going to organize. It's going to go all in, balls to the walls, for autonomy. He announced 888. Do you guys think that this is not, it's not enough, right? Just because he says this, because there's restructuring, because he does a presentation 88, none of that's going to change investors' minds. It's not going to change anybody's mind until they actually launch a program. But it's like you watch these things that are happening and other people are ignoring it until it happens. Sorry, so I went out a little I, long there. <laughs> yeah, how dare you? How dare you? How dare uh, you? Hans and I haven't even had a chance to fight yet. Uh, <laughs> the the So the, the first thing with any company that's trying to do this in this space is where are they going to get their money? Where is Figure going to get their money? We now know. Uh, but all of them, you have to ask where are you getting the money? And the answer with Tesla is they still have automotive sales. They still have mega pack ramping. None of this uh, negates mega pack. You could argue that robo taxi might kill automobiles in the way that MTV killed radio. Sure. But you could say that, uh, or the internet killed television, but mega packs are a whole separate thing and it's a growth industry. And there is at least for the next 10 years, infinite demand. Those are sources of revenue. The cash flow can keep funding these moonshots. And I call them moonshots. I'm not saying that they're impossible. We have been to the moon. We will go back to the moon. Maybe not you and I. I've got th I've got a thing that day. But uh, there are <laughs> there are plenty of sources of revenue to keep all that going. I'm going. Yeah. Screw you. I'm going to leave yeah, you. you. I don't care. Yeah, you, you can zoom. We can zoom. But the ping is really bad. Oh, God. So, uh, you know, this is kind yeah. of wild speculation still on my part. It, it remains to be proven out, but I am firmly convinced that the reduction of the subscription price of FSD mm -hmm. to $99, yeah. and yeah. I know we've spoken about this, Herbert, but I think that that's the beginning of a whole set of pricing strategies that Tesla's going to deploy to really start getting a lot more human data on FSD, but in the process generate more revenue. And that really over the next couple of quarters, I expect to see software as a service revenue just begin to explode onto the balance sheet. And that as that becomes an absolutely irrefutable trend that Wall Street sees, that it will have a large impact on the valuation, the multiples, the story, the narrative, all of those things. And that will happen probably before we really arrive at what robo taxis look like. You know, it's a lot easier yeah. to sell robo taxis uh, to investors and to other OEMs when you have a good level two, level three system and say, like, we're, you know, this is not a zero to one thing. We're just continuing to improve this thing over here that already works it already makes money and we're just making improvements on it so um i mean that's one of the things that i think we're likely to see in the next year 
Um, I think we'll begin to see it. Maybe not this next quarter. Well, yeah, it's not going to show up in the, the earnings call that we're about to have next week. Maybe we'll start to see it the next one after that. Um, just like in small amounts. Um, but then I think each quarter after that, it becomes more and more likely. You know, so first of all, we, we just heard Elon saying, um, he's going to go balls to the wall autonomy. And he's been repeating quite often, every single day, he's had a tweet or post about autonomy and FSD and Robotaxi ever since 8.8. He is going to focus. He's going to make the company do 8.8. So now that he's said, we're going to go basically, you know, focus so much on autonomy. I think this is more than just let's improve FSD. Obviously, technology needs to improve. I think they're now going to, right? put a lot of funding and effort and time to make sure that the whole program is coming. We might be seeing more and more of this, uh, and certainly 8.8. You know, now that he said this, I'm much more confident that 8.8, August 8th, is not just going to be unveil, here's what a robotaxi looks like, great, sometime in the future we're going to have a program. Some people are thinking, well, you can't just do that. You're going to have to do, you know, a pickup and drop off. Great. That's also something you can do now with your own cars. But I think they needed to show the actual app. They need to show and say something about when this program and how the program might work. They might do that. Now I'm much more confident that they're going to have that. Um, this is not just going to be something that, you know, it's going to be like, this is it, you know? So that's what I'm expecting. Do you guys think that um, next week on Tuesday, they're going to have the earnings call? What do you got? What do you, what do you think you might say about the changes that they're making to Tesla? I don't think they're going to necessarily say much. I expect to see uh, maybe sometime uh, on the call we could hear who the replacements are taking over the positions in the executive team vacated by Rohan and uh, Drew. But I don't think we're going to hear much uh, in terms of forward-looking stuff. I think, I think what we're talking about on the earnings call is the past quarter, and I'm not expecting uh, much more than vague terms that could be read in a number of ways like tea leaves uh what do you think hans yeah i i mean i'm preparing for the worst and hoping for the best as far as the earnings call is concerned i i keep thinking back to you know earnings calls in the 2018 2019 era when and that's kind of i think a phase of the company like Today just feels like that general era. And I remember Elon saying, hey, let's go to YouTube. All these questions suck by the institutional investors. And I don't think that I necessarily expect that level of antagonism from Elon on this call, but I also don't expect him to be super warm and fuzzy and accommodating to people that Elon is going to think like this is so so obvious like he's said it in his ex posts this is so obvious right now and people who don't agree with him that that is obvious i just don't expect him to have a ton of patience to handhold them to explain why it is so blindingly obvious and i think that's going to create a gap of frustration um Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the executive team will do a great job of clearly communicating where the company's at, where we're going, and what the reasoning is behind all of these decisions. Um, it's definitely possible. I would love that. It wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. Um, but I've been around this block a few times, and uh, I know that that's not usually how this situation plays out. So I just okay, wanted so, to take a quick second, real quick, to say mm -hmm. in the comments, I, I want to hear from you guys, what do you think will be Tesla's three biggest revenue sources in 2030? Is it going to be auto, mega pack, autonomy? Is it going to be bot AI? Is it going to be uh, selling chip patents? I don't know. You guys have some great insights, and I'd love to hear them. And just a reminder that this is a simulcast on Brighter with Herbert, on Hans C. Nelson on YouTube, and on Futuraza. We do this every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, because uh, it's how we get ready for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Good, <laughs> good point. So thank you for that, uh, Brian. So uh, I wanted to mention that I did a show with uh, 
Brian Wang, and he this is an incredible show because he explained that Tesla today not only has passed the 100 exaflops that they were projecting they would do by August, they likely have you know 400 exaflops, uh, certainly way more than 100 at this point. And so everything you're hearing about the restructuring and the going you know, going full, full in on autonomy, that's all very good news, of course, not only for AI, for autonomy, but for AI and bots, because they've spent this ton of money on, um, on uh, chips and uh, they're, they're well ahead in compute constraint. They've just announced that they've gonna build a new data, data center in Buffalo, New Jersey. And then they're obviously going all in on bots too. So for them to say that they're going to go all in on robotaxi at this point, I, I'm, I just think that it's all going to add up, right? This in, that mass improvement in FSD is also improvement in what the bots can do and what it's going to go to. The other thing that I want to talk about today is the other big event that happened this morning. So, of course, we've got um, a letter that was sent out to all the sh shareholders this morning that they announced that Tesla said that form... Uh, Pre-14A has been filed with the United States uh, SEC, and uh, basically it's a preliminary proxy statement. And, you know, first it starts off with the company highlights, how great the company's been, the key things the company's accomplished, uh, certainly in 2023. Uh, but now they're asking shareholders to vote that uh, it's very important that shareholders, this is a Robin Denholm, she's the chairwoman of the board of directors at Tesla, and she's asking for folks to vote in the 2024 annual shareholder meeting, which is now going to be uh, held in two months from now, in June, April, May, June, in June. And so the shareholders, they want you to vote on several measures. One of them is re, uh, re-electing Kimball Musk and James Murdoch. That's step one. But the most important two that they want all of us to vote on is approving Tesla's state of incorporation from Delaware to Texas, and then ratifying the compensation plan that was approved in 2018, because the judge rescinded it in Delaware, we now need to re-vote again. And apparently the good news is that four of the top 10 institutional investors have agreed to doing this as well. So the, high, the likelihood for these things to be approved is very, very high. Thank you, Daryl. Daryl said it's June 13th at 3030 for the shareholder meeting. You'll have a chance to vote for that. That's very important for all of us. And so what uh, I just had a live stream with uh, Alexandra Mertz and with Richard Hoffman, a lawyer, and what they were saying is this is great news. This means that Elon, that Tesla believes that this is going to have a high chance of success and that if it's a first step, there's still going to be, you know, appeals and, 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 you know, all their kinds of uh, legal maneuvers seem to happen before anything is important. But if we vote this back in the 2018, Elon is going to be very focused on Tesla. Having said that, I really don't think his focus has not been on Tesla. I, I really, I can't, I don't understand those people who say, oh, you know, Elon's sand, but he's like, he's purpose, he doesn't want the stock to rise. But dude, he's, he's releasing bot videos every week. He's, he's showing you, uh, and, you know, announcing 8.8 of a robotaxi. Version 12.3.3 went out, 12.3.4 went out. He's focused. He's done a complete reorganization of the company for the purpose of making sure that Tesla succeeds. None of that is happening. Having said that, though, uh, both Richard and Alexandra said that if this compensation plan was not ratified, meaning re-voted back in again in June 13th, Elon could leave. And so this is one of those things. But I just want to, you know, obviously he's not leaving. He's not, that's not going to happen because this is going to happen. Uh, it's very high likelihood this will pass. So these were announced today. So for me, I'm listening to this. Okay, I've been waiting for this. Alexandra said it was going to happen, and it did happen. If it didn't happen today, that means that things are even further delayed, and this whole kind of like what's going to happen to Elon, uh, his compensation plan is just going to stick there for a lot much longer. So for the, that this has happened means that Tesla, Elon's on board. They they probably already have their new compensation plan, but they couldn't talk about it today because they don't want the Delaware court to have anything to do with a new comp plan. So they don't want to mention that until they've got the annual shareholder meeting. They they Once we move the company out of Delaware and f officially in Texas, they'll talk to you about the new comp plan. At this point, I'm not concerned that Elon does not have 
something. You can already see his actions. He's going balls to the wall. <laughs> so we what saw a say? good a good question from uh, Atlas Ash. Does everyone who owns an, any number of shares get to vote? And the yes. answer is yes. And your votes are weighted based on your shares. So if you have 10 shares, you get 10 votes. If you have 1,000 shares, you get 1,000 votes. And uh, if you're Gary Black or Ross Gerber, you get fewer votes than my buddy Jeff. Because yep. those guys, for the amount of attention they get, really don't have much in terms of holdings. Ross was so excited for autopilot when he first uh, tried it out. This is the future. And now that the stock isn't performing the way he wants and he didn't get a seat on the board of directors, he says everybody loves driving and will continue driving forever because that makes sense, apparently. I mean, people who change their thinking uh, because of the stock price going up and down, it, it just shows you that they're not being objective about a company. If you lose your money or you d decide not to be in Tesla anymore, but you could still be very positive about what's positive, be very negative about what's negative, and, and vice versa. I don't think owning the stock should change your opinion. Your opinion should be based on the business and the product. And then, you know, yeah. Of course. Uh, anyways. And, and I... And I would say as a, as a housekeeping note to the fans out there and the trolls, you got to give us all thumbs up. Otherwise, no one will see our brilliance or your brilliance if you're a very clever troll. So uh, thumbs up all around. It really helps uh, YouTube spread the word. So this question, do you think existing vehicles in the fleet, Harbor 3 and 4, will be robo-taxi capable? From what I keep hearing from Elon and uh, that, in fact, Robotaxi is more capable on hardware three than four right now because all of the training is on hardware three. So all these cars today, and that's one of the things that one uh, Hans and I just did a video, um, which is which will drop in the next few days. But I want to ask the, the audience here to think about this, right? So Elon says we're going to go all in on Robotaxi, and it sure sounds like that they're not canceling the compact car but it's not, not going to be the priority. The priority is going to be RoboTaxi. It could very well be, and most people are telling me, that the RoboTaxi will be prioritized in Giga Texas, and the compact car could become a priority for other gigafactories, for other regions where you don't expect RoboTaxi to come. Having said that, is there a possibility, of course, that RoboTaxi does not come in time, and so then you're going to have a reduction in margins? If, you, if they can show you that your existing car can actually be robot taxi ready, that's going to increase the sales of Tesla's in general. And so you might not need a compact car in year 2025 and 26, but which you would have had a small volume of compact cars anyways. You could just make that up with increased sales of Model 3s and Model Ys when they show you that friggin' Teslas could become robot taxi ready. Uh, what do you guys think about that? So I don't think people are ready to accept that premise again. They heard that in 2019. A lot of people were absolutely convinced um, and it hasn't happened yet. And I think that left a bad taste in their mouth. They're not ready to accept, you know, I want a $25,000 car, but I'll buy a 35, 40,000 because it's gonna make me money. I don't see people agreeing with that again. If any car can be it, then we really should be moving full steam ahead on the on the compact because all of those compacts could be robo taxis especially Full if you're steam ahead do... yeah i think that was do... a that's a uh a freudian slip dude no uh so they <laughs> if they if they uh the best cars are steam powered my friend steam is the way of the future i volunteered at a railroad museum those guys were not very forward thinking with my ideas anyway the um if it's drive by wire then the steering wheel is no longer an issue it doesn't have to connect to anything when it's in self-driving mode, unlike with a three or Y or S or X, where there is physical linkage that a, a unruly passenger could override the car's controls in ways that could be potentially dangerous. Uh, but I, I just don't see why we're not moving more aggressively with a factory in Mexico or China or Berlin or really anywhere else. Uh, but, uh, I have second guessed the company in the past and I have been wrong on all, almost all of my second guesses. So I would say, uh, yeah, the only one I got right was that they probably would not keep the yoke. Uh, so we shall see.
Do you have thoughts Hans? on that, Hans? Yeah, you know, jump in or um, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot to add to that, actually. All right, so let's talk about other game changing moves that uh, Tesla's doing. Um, th- so you know, the the I mentioned earlier that the 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 purchase of what they're doing with AI, um, the the chips. So Elon did, I'm trying to find the tweet here just to prove to everybody, because I do have it, where he said that, you know, in this chart that was presented, and it said that Meta is about 300,000 H100s, and the next one is at 30,000, and Tesla's sixth. And Elon replied back to that and saying, that's not true. Tesla would be number two, and XAI would be number three. And this is where my show with Brian Wang proved that he's got all these Kind of like he pieced together all the tweets that uh, other executives have said that Elon has said that that Tesla and XAI have purchased significant amount of chips, and now you heard them say that they're not long no longer compute constrained. So this move by Elon creating XAI, and he initially said he wanted that to be part of Tesla, but the the developers and the people he would need to hire wouldn't want to be part of a big company, want to be a small company, create a separate company. They launch Grok in three months, then they launch Grok 1.5, they're announcing 1.5 coming up in a couple of weeks here, in a week or so. And he's already saying that Grok 1.5 is gonna be better than the, all the others out there already now. So not only did they come late, they caught up very quickly and now it's better. And then what they said was that Grok 1.5 can do videos. Did you guys see the Jim Fan comment? So Jim Fan is an NVIDIA, uh, developer creating the bot AI. And he said that the cool thing about Grok 1.5 is that because it can uh, understand video, what it can do for the cars, the robo taxis that we have, is that when a car comes and it has a scene and has to make a decision what's happening in the scene, okay? Like there's children with backpacks that maybe there's a school nearby, they might come running out. It would know that. It would know that it would make a decision of what's happening. This is the brilliance of this. It's no longer just, you know, just a car driving and seeing humans walking. So it better be careful. This is understanding the scenario. Um, so that's the next big game changing move, right? It's Grok integration into the cars, into the bots, and the the kind of the way that the companies are going to work together. Uh, thoughts on that? I think there's a lot of opportunity there. I think uh, having, you know, there's this new trend. Everyone wants to make a little AI button. Uh, we saw Marquez Brownlee uh, address that, take a company down a peg, uh, because all it really is is a, a smartwatch that goes on your shirt and costs more money for no real benefit. It can do anything your phone with an app can do. So why not skip the best? Uh, accessory is no accessory, put it in the car. Why would you need an AI assistant that you wear and pay $26 a month for $20 a month when you could just press the right scroll wheel and say, um, find me, a a, a non-corporate chain coffee shop along my route. That's useful. And that requires AI. That is not something you're going to easily get from a search result without spending a lot of time digging. And I think just having an AI intelligent navigation system, because when I look for restaurants, it'll often say, oh, you know, the the closest one is 11 miles behind you. So go a half hour. That's not useful. And I can't do it while I'm driving. So getting all of these automated pieces together in one would be helpful. And I think AI is, XAI is better positioned to handle that than Tesla's own internal software team. This is to me, the the use case for that kind of intelligence. What do you think, Hans? Yeah, and I think that those opportunities are all on the table. What What we know is that Tesla has said, hey, we want to start building copy and paste data centers. We don't know exactly what form that's going to take, but if they're doing copy and paste data centers, they're doing something with distributed artificial intelligence that we can guarantee you. And so whether that is for robots, whether that is for FSD, whether that is for Grok integrations, whether that's you know a new entertainment platform that exists inside of the robo taxis, like 
there are so many possibility for software and services that Tesla can deliver on this incredibly large platform of incredibly complex hardware that they have. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that the the Grok integration makes 100% sense, especially now that, you know, the, the model weights are open sourced. And so um, I think it becomes a platform that's easy to develop on for Tesla without creating weird shareholder uh, conflicts of interest and stuff. Um, I, I think that it's just obvious that this is the future that we're moving towards. Whether we can get the exact, like, you know, it doesn't have to be Grok. They could also do it with Mistral. Uh, you know, there's there's any number of other services that they could also use. And regardless of which one they use, it's going to be something that is valuable to the customer. The test is going to figure out a way to serve at an economical cost and make a bunch of money on. Um, and so I think that's really the thing, you know, from an investment standpoint that people just need to appreciate the size of the opportunity that Tesla has in front of it to earn massive amounts of money off of software. What do you think about um, uh, them announcing that, or Elon saying that Grok, XAI's Grok, is going to become open source? <laughs> is that more of a, a spiteful uh, move to try to you know, negate open AI? Or is it something that is a brilliant, game-changing move by Tesla that we haven't seen yet, why he might be doing that? Well, well they've already open oh, sourced ahead. the weights. Yeah, and so like it is, it's already, the weights are open source. Now, that's not um, the same as anyone being able to just recreate those weights in their own system, which is useful if you would like to then take and modify that model. Um, but that said, it, it does make it easy to develop on. And I, I think that it is a move, you know, part of it is spite, part of it's for lols, part of it is for memes, um, but also part of it is a legitimate contribution to the field of artificial intelligence research and what Brock is doing and what XAI is doing is very like they have been catching up very fast. You know, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that they have caught up to the leaders in the field yet, but they are doing innovative work that on the margins, they are doing some new things that are valuable and beneficial to the field. And by contributing what they are doing into the open source domain, they are helping to democratize access to this technology. So I would say that the if it's completely, what does open source mean in this context? Does it mean anyone can just take it and use it and it works just as well? If that's the case, I don't know what value X uh, AI would even have at that point, but that's beyond my scope of, uh, of comprehension at this point. So I would say that, um, if it is made open source, then, you know, there's the odds of it becoming something that Tesla would purchase drops to zero. Uh, and that if it's, if he does do that, it would be purely to spite open AI because he left because he didn't want it to be monetized. He didn't want it to be a business. He wanted it to be an organization that existed for the betterment of humanity. And as soon as he left, they turned around and said, okay, so money ideas, everybody who's got money ideas. And I think that was uh, a real sticking point. And he thought, well, if it's going to become this big subsidiary of Microsoft, why, why did I leave? Why did I step down? You know, he, he really kicked off that AI movement at, with open AI, and then it turned into what it is today. And I think that's pretty frustrating for a number of, of people, Elon included. Okay. So another potential game changing move, I don't know if this is one or not, but it's the financing of the vehicles. So for about 10 minutes, two days ago, right? Um, it appeared on Tesla's website that they're going to offer 0.99. That was happening with the layoffs, but also the Elon saying that they want to completely change how the uh, sales and marketing. They removed the ability to buy inventory cars, which usually have 5,000, even 10,000, or 5 to 10 percent reduction in par cars out there. So, the, could they be uh, coming up with a brand new way to sell the cars? Now, financing is something I think we all have been wanting for them to do for a long time. 
but it's not new, right? Lots of car companies offer this. Uh, it's it's available out there, zero percent financing. But it's something that Tesla should have been done doing a long time ago, especially if they, he's saying that it's the financing. Eighty percent of cars bought is through financing. Um, that it should have lower interest rates would have gotten more people to buy cars. But you know, with when well, now that you have this, but you know, stronger belief that FSD is going to work and that you really know that it's coming, this new revenue stream, a subscription revenue stream, maybe they're willing to kind of give that to to, to people now with revolutionary financing offer, offering. Any any suggestions so, on that, so or do you think it's exciting? A couple of points on it. <clears throat> the inventory vehicles are still available. They just don't have inventory discounts. They're the same price as if you configure it fresh. And I understand the thinking there. It is the same as if you configured it. They don't come in a hundred different variations. They come in like three. It's your wheels, your interior, and your exterior colors. And that's it. So there's, if you can find one local, you shouldn't get a discount for the convenience of paying, uh, uh, for the convenience of taking delivery sooner. Now, I understand why they did. Uh, on the financing issue, I would say that uh, it's likely that it was an error because we know in Germany, they just introduced zero or zero nine, nine, something very, very competitive on, uh, as a purchase incentive. And it could be that it was prematurely rolled out in the wrong region and they just caught it. We don't know. And I agree with you that, uh, interest rate discounts are the way to go. It doesn't necessarily turn them into a bank. What it does is they're just, when you buy a car, if the real interest rate's five and the dealer charges you seven, they get a premium. If you say, I won't take this car unless you sell it to me at 3% interest, they can pay the difference to buy it down to three. And uh, that's how those deals work. Uh, and then of course the dealer just charges you more somewhere else. So the on those things, Tesla is just working with an outside bank to buy down your rate to zero or one or whatever competitive rate it is. That's how all of those guys do it. And in terms of the inventory management, we saw Elon saying, boy, that buying process is so, uh, it really needs to be streamlined. And a lot of consumers stepped in and said, the buying process is wonderful. What needs streamlining? It is for and good, my, yes. And my answer is, we don't see behind the scenes. This is like a duck crossing the pond. Above the water, mm -hmm. it looks great, but underneath they're kicking like hell. So. I've seen people recently who just bought their Tesla and weeks later still don't have their plate because uh, they checked online and saw that the that Tesla had not yet uh, submitted that batch of registrations for plates to be sent out. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe it's behind the scenes, it's really uh, muddy and, and needs to be streamlined. So it could be things that we don't see where it looks great, but behind the scenes, it's a cobbled together mess and they want to get it more automated, more simplified, more foolproof. So I think all, all of those things. It's definitely better than, you know, a lot of auto companies have gotten to the point where they have captive financing, where they actually own the loans and they can, you know, lend out at whatever rates that they want. While that makes sense, you know, at a certain scale, it does require a lot of capital. And Elon has specifically mentioned that that was one of the reasons that even though they've thought about offering captive financing, that they just even, you know, having 20 billion in the bank just didn't have the cash necessary to be able to finance every single sale uh, that they had. And so doing these interest rate buy downs is something that's a lot more capital efficient. It allows them to have an impact on the rate at a larger scale without using nearly as much money. Um, and it is something that our, you know, friendly Wall Street analysts like Gary Black have been advocating for for a long time. Um, and, you know, I, I think it makes sense if uh, definitely to incentivize people to, you know, be willing to take on a new car purchase um, that, isn't as affected by the economy. I mean, people's buying power is still significantly reduced right now. Um, there are so many areas of the economy where inflation is impacting the wallets that even if you buy down the interest rate on these new vehicles, uh, I think that people just aren't in nearly as healthy of a financial position to afford these types of new car notes, even at lower interest rates as they were several years ago. So it will have an impact. How much of an impact, you know, kind of remains to be seen. I think that 
all of that said, we are in a position now with the potential for recurring revenue sales on the FSD software to more than offset all of that. So um, as we move forward, that's that's the thing that I'm continuing to yeah. try and keep a close eye on. I um I had a uh, debate with Alexandra the last several weeks uh, last week that which when uh, when an eight eight when they announce the new robo taxi program or not eight eight but at some point when they start the robo taxi program will they start with Tesla's robo taxi vehicle or will they allow people like us who own our own Teslas to be able to then uh, be part of a robo taxi and start with customer cars. And I said, no, it's going to be a robo taxi vehicle. She believes strongly it's going to be robo taxi or your current cars. And one of the things that if they if they did decide to deprioritize the compact car, if they can show that your current car can become robo taxi ready, um, the sales of Model 3's Model Y will go through the roof. Elon has said many times, repeated this over and over, that it's going to be the greatest capital reallocation in history. That your capital, what what did it, what was his words exactly, Hans? Asset value increase. Asset value increase, right? So if my car is it's actually reduced in price because it's a used Tesla, it's less than fifty percent of what it used to cost because all used car prices has just plummeted everywhere. But all of a sudden, my Tesla, not any other car, but that Tesla will be five times more, four times more than what it is now because everybody knows eventually it's going to make you money. They'll want to buy my old Tesla. Um, so my car is going to go up high. Yeah, and then so if you want to buy a car, you're going to go buy the one that can become a robo taxi if they even just show some things. I, I'm now realizing that I'm maybe a miss, um, uh, underestimating that potential incredibly game, game changing. It truly is the game changing move. <laughs> uh, what's your well, thoughts on that? So I would say that I don't make projections beyond the horizon. And this is beyond the horizon. I don't think many people are going to accept that story again even if it's true he's cried wolf too many times on imminent robo taxis and i don't um i wouldn't be surprised either way if you're right or if alexandra's right that it could be both i think if it is both it'll create a lot more demand for the existing vehicles and vehicle sales generally but I could see RoboTaxi being something where it needs to be rolled out one city at a time because you have to have new shops for it, new service centers where they clean the cars and check the tires and what, whatever they need to do. But really cleaning the cars, maintaining them. So they would need dedicated shops for that. And you can't do all markets at once. So you do something like tell Uber, look, we're not going to Tulsa until 2029. You can have Tulsa for now. And Uber or Lyft could, with confidence, roll out their own fleet. You can charge whatever rates you want. You can manage it. Any, you can add other cars to it if you want. Uh, but in the meantime, take as many as you want because we have more production capacity than we have the ability to pay for the vehicles to keep. It's a lot of money if you're doing millions. You can't keep them all while the revenue is growing to buy new ones. And it would keep uh, the cash flow coming in on the sale of those. So there's a lot of ways you could skin this cat that would be great that would be fantastic depending how you feel about skinned cats and it would be uh an opportunity to continue growing while uh while not putting artificial restrictions on yourself and not sacrificing your uh your current customer base wow anthony thank you for the super chat you got a super chat because especially after you said the word skin a cat uh... <laughs> it might Dude, have come in just take before. it back take it back no <laughs> ew ew way to way to end it brian jesus okay thank you guys very much so we talked a lot about the game-changing moves tesla is in a point of history i i don't think i'm under under uh, overstating it this is a point of history that's going to be important we're going to look back on it i'm very optimistic as many of us are here this is all you know good signs thanks everybody talk to you soon Bye-bye.